G'day guys, welcome to 5 Minute Friday. Today we are doing astrophotography with any Android phone. We'll go through how to do it, what you need, how to find it. Let's get into it. Number one, it doesn't matter what phone you have as long as it's an Android phone. If you've got a Pixel phone, check up the top here. I've done a video all about astrophotography with Pixel phones. If you've got an iPhone, check up there as well. It's another video there about iPhone astrophotography. But if you've got an Android phone, as long as it's got pro mode or manual mode in the camera, you can do this. But results will vary depending on how good the camera is in the device that you have. So, you may not be able to get what we're doing here, but you'll probably come pretty bloody close. Today what we're using is a Galaxy S21 Ultra to take all these photos. Who is the equipment you're going to need? And you are going to need some equipment, it's not negotiable. You're going to need a tripod, and you're going to need a phone holder to go onto that tripod. Any tripod will do. Tripods are designed to carry weight, and basically it's up to you as to your lifestyle. Does it need to be compact? Does it need to be flexible? Do you need to be able to mount it onto things to decide on the tripod that you want to get? But I can tell you now that all the little flexible tripods are quite good for doing what we do here. As far as phone holders go, I'm a big fan of Ulanzi. If you've watched this channel for any sort of period of time, you know that I'm a big fan of Ulanzi. The ST02S, I think it's called. There's that little black one here. That one there, I've used it for years and years and years. I've got a few of them. I use it to compare all the different sort of phones that I do on this channel. It's a ripper, absolute ripper phone holder. It, and it's cheap, they're dead set cheap. They're like 15 bucks, really, really cheap. Ulanzi actually sent me another one, the ST23, and that one there folds dead flat. So it's nice and portable if you like. It goes onto any tripod, it's got the little thread on the bottom, you put a plate on there, mounts to any tripod at all. The best thing about this one, it's got two hot shoe mounts, so if you're a vlogger and you want a light and you want a microphone, this one's really good too. The thing that I like about it though, is that you, it's spring loaded, so you can just push the phone into it and on the back of it, it's got a screw up knob there to make sure it's nice and secure. So this one here is actually faster to use than the ST03S that I use, but uh, I've got to tell you, I'm pretty impressed with it. You have to have those two things. You have to have a tripod, you have to have a phone holder. It's not negotiable, you have to have it. Number three is environment, and that is to do with light pollution, weather, location, all of those things. First thing you need to work out is get away from the light pollution that you have. Go to lightpollutionmap.info, and what you want to do with that resource is find somewhere that's reasonably close to you, so you don't need to travel too far, and get away from the, the light, the colored light on those maps, and you want to head to a location that's a Bortel 4, 3, 2, or 1. Where I am here is a Bortel 1 site. This is the best sort of skies you're going to have for taking these sorts of photos. Now I have taken photos in Bortel 4 and they look pretty good, but the lower the number, the better you're going to be. Now as far as weather goes, you want to avoid obviously cloud, because if there's cloud there, you don't see the stars. You also want to avoid the moon. The moon's an absolute pain in the ass when you're trying to take these sorts of photos. You can do it, but if you have the option to avoid the moon and just go out next week and take these photos instead, do that. Number four is finding that Milky Way, that galactic core that we all see in these awesome photos and knowing where it is in the sky because this thing is seasonal and the best way to do it is using photo pills in your location, use your augmented reality in photo pills and it's going to show you where that galactic core is in the night sky right now. Number five is the settings and the settings that you're going to set this phone up to take these sorts of photos. Always use this as a starting point and bring the numbers down from there. You're going to use 30 seconds exposure time, you're going to use ISO 3200 or the maximum that phone will let you take it to. The, as far as focusing goes, put it all the way to infinity focus, that's all the way to the extremity. You can come back a little bit, but for starting point, take it all the way to the extremity. With the white balance, purely a personal choice. For me here in Australia, when this season is happening, it's usually the cooler months of the year, so I like to make those photos a little bit cooler. Around 4,500, 4,800 Kelvin, and you're on the money there. And uh, the last thing you want to do is put a two second timer, so, so you can touch that shutter button, let go of everything, and let it take a photo. The most common questions that I get asked in the comments on different astrophotography videos I get is, it's all white and it doesn't work. And what I'm talking about here with the starting points for all these settings, they're your starting points. If you take the photo and it's too white, bring your ISO down, drop it by half, take it to 1600 or whatever is half of what you started with. Bring it all the way down to 800 over time. It only takes 30 seconds to take these photos, so you've got time. Take the photo, it's too bright, bring the ISO down. Take another photo, still too bright, bring the ISO down again too bright well if it's at 800 i'd look then it's taking your shutter speed down to say 15 seconds and after that if it's still white 
you're probably not going to get it where you are. Go back and see what I was talking about with point number three about light pollution and get away from that light pollution because that is what's causing your problem. If your phone can shoot raw, shoot raw. With this sort of photography, it's always better to shoot raw. You have much more flexibility when it comes to the edit later on. So I'm all set up to take a photo now. The weather at the moment isn't that flash. You can probably hear a bit of wind in the microphone. Way out there, right where I'm trying to shoot, the Milky Way, the galactic core, because it's rising just there, there's actually a bit of lightning out there, which is unusual for here. Um, you never know what happens. If something happens in the sky that's kind of cool, I like to try and capture it. So I'm gonna take a photo with the same settings, 30 seconds, 3200, uh, ISO 3200, manual focus all the way to infinity, and white balance at say 43, 4400, and we'll take a photo. <laughs> I just got lightning and the Milky Way. I haven't done that before. That's freaking awesome. I haven't done that. That's uh, lightning and the Milky Way. Lightning here is pretty rare. Lightning and the Milky Way in the one photo. That's bloody awesome. Let me edit this up for you and I'll show you what it looks like. That's awesome. That's, that's a first for me. Now all the photos that you've seen throughout this video have all been from Android phones. That is a Galaxy S8, S10 and S21 Ultra. So this works on, well, all Androids as long as it's got that Pro Mode. All of the editing on all of these photos, for the most part, they're just presets over there from phonephotoschool.com.au. They're five bucks for a set of presets. Fill your boots, guys. They're really good presets to get your editing started. How good is that lightning and the Milky Way? That's bloody awesome. I've never done that before. I was really excited when I saw that. I was really happy to share it with you guys. All right, guys, that's it for me today. I'll catch you later.